So welcome back everyone to the Anime and Manga News for the week ending April 27th, 2012. Quite a few little things this week. Starting off with a follow-up from a previous story, we said that the K-On! film would be screening at the actual elementary school that was the inspiration for the school in K-On! Unfortunately, those screenings have been cancelled. The uh, reason cited was various circumstances. Thanks. So, I don't know what was going on, but unfortunately, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, what is going to happen, tur um, turning to some more manga news, members of the Democratic Party of Japan has established a study group with manga creators. Um, this is the ruling party of Japan. Uh, the study group of manga, uh, uh, sorry, study group on manga industry development is planning to, quote, promote the spread of manga culture in foreign countries, end quote. So it looks like it's going to be basically a way to um, sell more manga overseas. You know, this is a fairly significant part of the market over there. So how can they make more money and, and boost the economy? Uh, the Democratic Party of Japan has been the ruling party of Japan for like decades. So it's basically a, uh, a way of just pushing that forward. Um, <clears throat> the former minister of the economy for Japan, uh, Akihiro Ohata, um, is involved, as is Leiji Matsumoto of Galaxy Express 999 and uh, Yamato and such. Um, Tetsuya Chiba of Ashida no Jo and about 40 other people um, met to form the study group. So that's pretty darn cool that uh, more uh, uh, emphasis on manga over in the rest of the world. Meanwhile, the Ota King has spoken about illegal downloading. That's right. Um, Gainax co-founder Toshio Okada, who was actually shown in Otaku no Video, the original OVA, as the Ota King, or one of the guys trying to be the Ota King, uh, and has since uh, talked a lot about Otaku culture and so forth, uh, posted a video on Nico Nico Doga talking about his views on uh, illegal downloading and streaming of anime, and as well as other things. And uh, he basically talks uh, at length. Uh, he basically says, honestly, if that makes you happy, that's fine. But he's encouraging, he encourages fans to buy when they have the financial means to do so. Um, then talked about folks who, have, who uh, basically never plan to stop distributing illegally. They're like, we're just going to do this all the time because it's free. And he says that such, a, that such a person is only interested in the personal practical value something to bring, uh, can bring to them. But uh, he compares this to someone who claims he doesn't want to date girls, but does want to grope women on the train as long as he's not caught. Which I think is an interesting way of putting it. That, uh, yeah. Um, moving on to the creator's point of view, he says that um, uh, he believes people will still pay money for a good product and that creators need to have a realistic out outlook on the market, understanding that you know, there are always going to be some pirates um, and at least it's better to, to entertain and amuse people than to leave them bored. Um, so you know, it's, it's not a totally dire thing for creators. Um, he, he does realize, uh, he says, that such an outlook does kind of look down on these sorts of individuals and uh, he suggested that, that paying fans consider themselves a rank above those who do not pay for their anime and manga. He advocates, rather than becoming, rather than becoming upset at people who illegally copy, paying fans should feel sympathy and understanding towards them and consider them pets rather than parasites. I think it's kind of funny. So that's what the Oda King feels about such things. Kind of interesting. Uh, meanwhile, I'm sure he'd be happy to see that the 1-1 one -one scale Gundam has returned to Odaiba Island uh, back in April 19th. Uh, it was re it was uh, unveiled back in Odaiba. The full-scale Gundam statue is back, and um, uh, in, in the uh, 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 in Japan and all, it looks as gorgeous as it ever does. So that that's cool. See, that's still still around. Moving on to the news on anime film uh, films in Japan. A letter to Momo, latest production IG film. Um, opened in Japanese box office this past, week, past weekend at number nine. So not doing too well. Um, it was seen 61,000 times on 276 screens, uh, earning about $95,000. Uh, now, granted, you know, Japanese cinemas see way lower numbers than American films do. So don't compare that to you know, Transformers 2. But still, that's, that's pretty low. Um, meanwhile, <clears throat> um, Hiromichi Masu... Uh, sorry. Hiromichi Masuda, who uh, used to work for Madhouse, has said that um, he thinks it's, it's, it's likely, or there's a possibility, that From Up on Poppy Hill, the latest Studio Ghibli film, probably did not recoup his production costs. Uh, he's betting that based on the 
you know, what he knows of how much those films cost and um, what we know about how much that film um, brought in. He said it probably didn't make back its money. Um, and he goes on to say that basically that's particularly uh, worrisome for these studios that rely on box office receipts. Um, that's a, a much um, se more serious thing than, uh, for example, viewers on a, a, a television series where there's a lot more money made um, down the road on film. Generally, you know, th those those receipts in the box office are a really good indication of how well the film is going to do overall. So, n not a, a not good news for Studio Ghibli and films in general in Japan. Um, however, Gageki G Magazine, one of the larger anime magazines over in Japan, has announced. They're collaborating with Anaplex on a new original animation project. Uh, title has not been formally announced, but they have licensed, or they have uh, bought a domain name, vintodepint.com. So who knows? But uh, we'll see uh, where that goes. The Geki G's is one of these magazines that talks about anime a lot, one of these big glossy magazines. So that's pretty cool. They also worked with um, Sunrise and Bandai with um, the Love Live School Idol Project. So who knows? But hey, more anime is a good thing. Um, meanwhile, in the endless licensing dream that is Evangelion, uh, over in Japan, uh, there, there have been launched, uh, actually, Schick Razors launched new advertisements featuring the cast of Evangelion shaving with Schick Razors, including Gendo Ikari shaving. I don't know. I find it funny. Um, moving on, Kyoto Animation, the studio responsible for, oh, Haruhi Suzumiya, Lucky Star, and K-On, plus many other things, uh, have announced the results of the third Kyoto Animation Award program. And this is a program where basically um, they're looking for folks to um, submit um, story ideas and so forth and so on to them for possible production into anime. Um, there were no grand prizes or honorable mentions in the manga or novel categories. Uh, they thank creators for submitting their works, but said there were no winning works. Basically, the material they've been getting has not been of sufficient quality for them to actually, you know, move on into animation, apparently. So, mm, that's sad, but what can you do? Moving on to some manga news. Uh, over in this side of the pond, uh, Viz's distributor has uh, listed 21st Century Boys, which were the last two volumes of 20th Century Boys. So it looks like that will be coming up, uh, slated for November 2012 and January 2013, respectively, for those two volumes. So hopefully that manga will be finishing up here pretty soon. My goodness. Um, also announced, Kodansha confirmed licenses of Battle Angel Alita Last Order, the new Battle Angel, Battle Angel Alita um, manga series, as well as Danza. Uh, so those will all be seeing releases over here in America. So that's good. More manga getting licenses getting licensed over here in uh, uh, in America. Unfortunately, uh, we did want to mention uh, Seiki Tuchida, the uh, mangaka behind Under the Same Moon, Yomawari Sensei, Henshuo Gira Gira, and so forth, has passed away due to cirrhosis of the liver. Basically, it means he drank a lot. He was 43. Um, he made his professional manga debut when he was still a teenager in 1986. So, um, he, uh, you know, very big talent in the world of manga, unfortunately, passed away. Um, still in manga news, on a, on a slightly lighter note, it was announced this past week that um, there's going to be a chapter zero of the Rurouni Kenshin manga to be published in August. So, apparently, there's going to be a, a chapter zero of Rurouni Kenshin, um, apparently drawn by Watsuki himself, that will... I, I don't know what it's going to be, but they're apparently returning back. Now, this is on the heels of the Shin Kyoto Hen Rurouni Kenshin animation project and, of course, the upcoming live-action film. So, apparently, they're returning back to the Tokyo Kenshin for more stuff. So, that's a good thing, um, but kind of interesting, kind of, kind of weird. Um, but, hey, more Kenshin, not a bad thing. Uh, moving back over to America, uh, interesting news for us over here. Jason DeMarco... A former producer for Toonami has been um, basically promoted to vice president of strategic marketing and promotions for Cartoon Network and Adult Swim. So someone from Toonami is rising up in the ranks of Cartoon Network. So what this means for Cartoon Network's lineup, who knows? Um, but he was a senior writer and associate creative director for Toonami. So good on him. Hopefully that means we will see more, well, frankly, more anime on Cartoon Network. That would be kind of awesome. 
meanwhile, the U.S. Supreme Court has announced they're going to review gray market imports. Um, basically, this is where uh, imports that are not um, authorized by the original maker, but not necessarily illegal. Uh, the, the case was uh, brought to light. There was a, um, a University of Southern California graduate student, Supop Kurt Sang, who uh, basically, uh, he's, he's, he's Thai. He asked his family in Thailand to send him international textbooks and then resold them on eBay in America for profit. Uh, published a number of, of these things. Um, not technically illegal because he was buying them and reselling them. But you're not supposed to resell textbooks. That's just one of those things. Um, so uh, uh, Kurt Stang has uh, basically uh, researched and, and, and said this is uh, under this goes under uh, for the first sale doctrine of U.S. copyright law and so forth and so on. So the Supreme Court has said they're going to review this um, because it, it is literally a, a an open question as to exactly what this means. It's going to have some interesting uh, implications as to uh, whether folks can actually you know resell stuff that was sold to them um, for profit. Um, and exactly how that can be done, and so forth and so on. So there can be some, you know, stuff, you know, pirating things like that. Could you know, could have some interesting uh, uh, ramifications for that. So we'll you know we'll, we'll see where that goes. Certainly let you know how that goes. Um, finally, some uh, some I want, don't want to quite say positive news, but some some more information about uh, Anime Boston, where there were some reports of some EMTs and police at the dance at, at Anime Boston. And uh, the chair lady of Anime Boston, Andrea Finnan, issued a statement explaining what happened. Basically, um, one of the dancers had a medical emergency and needed to be taken to the hospital. So that was what the EMTs were, were going on. Nothing, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, and then there was an alleged theft of a bag. And apparently it got kind of violent, people kind of pushing around, things like that. So the police arrived, um, investigated on site, and found some marijuana. And there was a, a, an arrest followed from that. And uh, unfortunately, the dance was ultimately closed down because there were some perceived overcrowding issues. But they're working with, um, let's see here, the, the hotel to make sure that doesn't happen. Apparently, there were just some, some questions. The dance can look really, really crowded. So it looks like there were just some unfortunate things in Anway Boston. So fortunately, nothing too serious. Anway Boston is fine. Uh, and hopefully, we will see more stuff uh, from them in the future. And they're certainly addressing the concerns. So that's good. So that's um, the news from this week. So like I said, a lot of... Bits and pieces, nothing too huge, but some interesting stuff this week. So that's what's going on. Hope to see you all next week.